Welcome to VELF Creations. Today, we're showcasing the power of the Commarker B460 Watt MOPA laser. From precise metal engravings to custom designs, we'll show you how this laser elevates your projects. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more laser engraving tips and tutorials. Let's get started. Commarker sent us this beast of a machine, and calling it exciting is an understatement. As first-time users of a MOPA laser, we know it can feel a bit intimidating, but we're here to share our experience. While setting up, we'll walk you through the key features of the B4. Commarker offers a range of B4 lasers, from 20 watts up to 100 watts, to fit any budget. Today, we're working with the 60-watt MOPA laser and exploring its standout benefits. At 60 watts, this is officially our most powerful laser yet, capable of engraving materials like stainless steel, leather, aluminum, gold, plastics, stone, and more. The unit ships with two lenses, allowing you to adjust the work area to suit any project. Ours came with a 200 by 200 millimeter lens and a 100 by 100 millimeter lens. The B4 operates at a 1064 nanometer wavelength, which can be harmful to your eyes, but Commarker includes protective glasses in a sturdy hard case. Engraving accuracy is an impressive 0.01 millimeters, with max speeds reaching up to a blazing 10,000 millimeters per second. The frequency can go up to 4,000 kilohertz, and the pulse width ranges from 2 to 500 nanoseconds. The laser arrives in three separate parts, the base, the supporting arm, and the laser head. We were impressed with how quick and easy the setup was. Within 30 minutes, we were running our first engraving. The supporting arm attaches to the base with a central screw, and four additional bolts secure it firmly in place. Height adjustment can be done either manually or with a push of a button at the front of the machine. More on that later. Next, we can attach the laser head to the top of the support arm with a few more screws underneath. The thing that we noticed right away is how well built the B4 is. The base, support arm, and laser head all feel very solid and durable. The last step is to attach the manual height adjustment knob at the top of the support arm, and assembly is officially done. Now taking a look at the back of the comm marker, we see a few different ports. Starting with this one on the bottom that has two pins. This port is used for a foot pedal that can help you start and repeat jobs quickly. It is super cool to see that comm marker ships this with the laser, and it doesn't require an additional purchase. Next, we have this 5-pin port. This will allow us to connect a controller that will be used with a rotary. Commarker sent us this amazing D80 rotary, and we will be engraving some cylindrical items with it later in the video. But we love the build quality of this, and having the ability to lock it down to the base for easier batch processing is a game-changer. Next is a USB port to connect the laser to your computer. It would be really cool to see a wireless version in the future. On the right side, we have the power cable port. Finally, we wanted to ask you guys, does anyone know what this is? We were trying to find it in the documentation but may have missed it. Help us out. Leave your ideas in the comments below. Let's get this thing powered on. We will rotate the laser and take a look at the front. We have the name of the laser right above some ventilation to keep the laser cool. This red button is an emergency stop which we can rotate to disengage it. Now we can click on the power button. Once powered on, we can use the two arrow buttons to adjust the focus of the laser head. The one on the left will move it up, and here is what that speed looks like. The one on the right will move the head down. Here you can also see the speed difference between moving the laser head manually versus how fast it moves when using the buttons. So really, the manual adjustment is really just good for precise movements, or when you are trying to find the optimal height for your lenses. When you receive your laser, you will have the focal distance labeled on the left side of the laser head. This distance is based on the 110 mm lens and can be measured with a ruler to the top of your material. This distance changes based on which lens you use, so adjustments will be needed when swapping lenses. There's also a second focusing option that we prefer. A low-power red laser emits from the lens, and two additional low-powered lasers on the underside of the laser head can be adjusted depending on the lens you're using. When aligned correctly, these three lasers will converge on the surface of your material, 
giving you a clear indication that the height is perfectly set. Also on the laser head, we have two buttons that can be used to start the marking, as well as a framing option when you are positioning your design on the material. All right, the time has come. Let's start engraving things. We will start by attaching two of these alignment guides to help us position our materials. As we go through these projects, we will be showing the settings that we used on the right. We are still learning the best parameters for the job, but these may help you get a good starting point. If you guys have any better suggestions for parameters, let us know. We love learning too. In this first example, what you are seeing is real time. However, some of the longer projects we will speed up. We wanted to demonstrate two different fill options. This first one will start at the bottom and work its way up. It engraves fast and looks great, but there is also a faster option. Enabling flood fill can significantly speed up engraving and often delivers great results. However, for certain materials and designs, it may lead to a less than ideal finish. Since flood fill engraves in a somewhat random pattern, stopping and resuming in the middle of shapes, it can sometimes create visible lines or discoloration in the engraving. Next, we wanted to engrave a fingerprint on this black stainless steel keychain. We kept the settings the same as the business card, and the flood fill is perfect for this scenario, where the details are so small that you won't notice any lines after the engraving. We liked the first attempt but wanted to see if we could get a brighter engraving, so we reduced power a bit and ran it a second time. That cleaned it up nicely, and here is the finished product. So cool. We love how the details turned out. Next, we wanted to put the MOPA part of this laser to use. This can be a bit intimidating, but Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D has an awesome video covering the B460Watt MOPA as well. So after you are done watching this video, go check out his review. Link in the description. Ryan has a really cool Mickey Mouse color engraving file that he provides in his video, and we wanted to give it a try on a stainless steel keychain. During this engraving, we did have the 200mm lens on, which may have given us a slightly different result, so we ended up doing one more pass. It is really cool to see the colors pop up. We are really looking forward to exploring colored engraving more, so we will be creating some test grids in future videos to see what colors we can get. The final result looks so cool. We really like how the steering wheel turned out. As some of you know, we have been really wanting to achieve black engravings on stainless steel. So later on in the video, we will use the same settings as Mickey Mouse's ears to do that on a stainless steel tumbler. Next, we wanted to test out the cutting power of the B4. So we are using a 0.4 millimeter business card to cut out some earrings. We wanted to show you the real-time cutting of the first earring with the settings we used. These are really the first parameters we tried, and although it cut through the card without issue, we think they can be optimized as well. But it is still very impressive with how quickly it made it through. Then we did a quick engraving to add a little more to these earrings. Next time, we would probably do the engraving first to prevent any movement. All we have to do once they are done is attach some hardware and add a card for packaging, and we have a quick and easy set of new earrings to wear. For this dog tag, we made the first pass at a higher power to get a deeper engraving, and then followed that up with the same settings but power reduced to 25%. This created a brighter look and makes the text easier to read. To improve this even more, we switched the mode of the design into a cut, which creates a nice dark outline that we ran a few times. Eventually, we want to figure out how to smooth out the engraving, because this creates a bit of a rough surface that will catch on fabrics a bit, but we are really happy with this first attempt. It is really cool that you can achieve different looks with different settings as long as you don't move the piece in between passes. We wanted to try some slate and rock and found this paper weight laying around. We have no idea what type of stone, glass, or material it is, so if you or a loved one is a geologist, let us know. We kind of just picked a setting and went with it, running a total of three passes to get a deeper engraving. And that was working great. Was being the key word here. We probably put a bit too much power into this paperweight, but it worked great on slate. Onto some laser engravable faux leather. We were really impressed with how even the engraving was with this one, and also how quickly it cut through this piece. 
As you can tell, we did practice a few times to narrow down the settings, but we're really happy with the results once it was complete. This is also a heat transfer material which makes it great for hats, jackets, and more. If you would like to get this and other laser engravable materials, we have links in our description. Next, we set up the D80 rotary, and the build quality is top-notch. Once it's locked down to the base of the B4, it's solid and won't budge. The rotary also features leveling capabilities, which is perfect for engraving tapered tumblers. As first-time rotary users in Lightburn, there was a lot to learn, so we'll share our experience and test results. We ran quite a few tests, and while the rotary and laser performed great, most of our initial results were due to our learning curve with the software. We're improving every day, and if you have any tips, we'd love to hear them. We use the black stainless engraving on a Mickey Mouse file, and although the process is time-consuming, we love the final look. This was one of the first projects we shared on social media with the B4, so if you're not already following us on TikTok or Instagram, you're missing out on quick, to-the-point videos with included settings. We also use the rotary to engrave this cup that we use with our coffee machine. So cool. Lastly, we wanted to try engraving coated bottles. This was a bit easier than the stainless steel, and the powder coating came off really smoothly. As we gain more experience and fine-tune our settings, we'll create another video focusing on the rotary and share everything we've learned. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials and insights. If you'd like to support us, you can find our ComMarker affiliate links in the bio, along with other Amazon material links. So what do you think of the ComMarker B4? Do you have a fiber laser currently in your shop? What else would you like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and stay creative.